This is how I turn a totally free wild ingredient into a spectacular dish. Oh, I am very proud of that labour of love, but one that I hope is going to be worth it. Mmm. Oh, absolutely delicious. Mmm. Down by the river right now, in many parts of the world, wild garlic, aka ramps, carpet the woodland floor, and the flavour is cherished by chefs. Well, that is quite the harvest. There is so much here. You often feel guilty about foraging in the woods. You're worried that you're going to take too much, but it's absolutely impossible here. I'm going to get cooking. Ah, so we're making raviolis today. Raviolis, I think, are the perfect way to celebrate this wild garlic. It's quite a romantic dish. Actually, making it is so satisfying and therapeutic, and they're like parcels of joy. So we're going to have wild garlic stuffed raviolis that are just going to sh showcase the harvest of wild garlic, which is amazing. And I've made raviolis throughout my life, whether it was in school, in cookery class, which was really exciting, and then in the kitchens, working long, long hours. But the chance just to stand behind the kitchen counter and just prep raviolis all day was just very therapeutic and relaxing amongst chaotic scenes in the kitchen. So I have a affinity to making raviolis and it's, it's super fun for me. Um, and actually, the absence of egg, because I don't eat eggs, but the absence of egg in my pasta dough is not a problem because historically, pasta dough was only ever made with just flour, water, salt, and sometimes olive oil. And it wasn't until the sort of richer, upper class people in Italy started adding egg to their, their pasta, which, you know, does add a luxurious richness and texture to the pasta. But I'll show you today how you can achieve something very similar just using the traditional technique of flour, water, salt and a bit of olive oil. So that's what we're going to do first is make our pasta dough. It does need some time to rest and during the resting process we'll make the filling. First up I've got my bowl of pasta flour which is double zero flour, it's extra fine flour. We're going to make a well in the centre, add a pinch of salt, a little extra virgin olive oil and just enough water to bring it all together. And what you can actually do to try and achieve that orangey colour that egg yolk gives to pasta is add some turmeric. We'll just add a tiny subtle touch of turmeric and we'll knead that for about five minutes until it's kind of elasticy, pliable is the word. And once I've got it to that stage, we'll wrap it in some uh, cling film and get it into the fridge to rest. Ah, a little Jamaican coffee, Italian made, 
fit in for our ravioli. <laughs> I don't know why I'm romanticizing this whole um, ravioli making video, but it feels right to me. Uh, so we're having a little coffee, me and Tom, whilst we're waiting for that dough to rest. But once we've had our coffee, I'm gonna make a filling. It's inspired by ricotta, and I'm gonna be using tofu to replicate that. I actually had some guinea pigs try this recipe last week, and they couldn't believe the texture and the taste of the filling. We're gonna have wild garlic running through it. It's really, really simple. So the best way to cook this wild garlic, I think, and most vegetables, is steaming. Now, I use a traditional sort of steaming basket for this. Honestly, this wild garlic cooks in a second. So you just get a wok with some water in, invest in these baskets, it's, they're not expensive. You will notice that the color doesn't disappear. Nothing bleeds out if you're boiling veg. All that color just leaches out of it when it's in water. This will take 30 seconds to a minute in the steaming basket. Once it's steamed, we'll let it cool slightly, chop it up fine. So into my blender with the wild garlic, I'm gonna add some tofu, which I've just pressed dry, some nutritional yeast, which adds this real nutty cheesiness, some homemade miso paste for that umami punch, a little lemon juice and zest. I'm also gonna add some onion powder, a pinch of sea salt, a few tablespoons of flour. This gets blitzed up now until it's super smooth with a little milk to help it blend and a bit of white pepper. get these lids on. <laughs> Just, I hate these blenders. Really use a powerful blender because you want this as smooth as possible. And I would recommend trying to get hold of silken tofu for this recipe. I couldn't get any from the supermarket, so I just used like a firm tofu. So it's a little bit harder to get it super smooth. But what I'm gonna do now is get this into a mixing bowl and add some capers. And those will be lovely running through this, just a sharp little kick. So this lovely filling goes in the fridge now, just to firm up a little bit before we roll out our pasta. So the pasta's firmed up and had time to rest in the fridge. I'm gonna start rolling this out in my pasta machine. This is so exciting for me. And I'm in my new kitchen in the pantry area. So I think we'll do it here, some nice long surfaces. And when you're, when you're actually rolling it out, it gives it opportunity to knead a little bit more and firm up as you're rolling it through. This is my favorite bit of making pasta, is actually the rolling process. So you just wanna flour up your pasta machine. Pasta machines aren't expensive either, which is good. And you wanna set it on the highest setting, which is the widest. And we're gonna put our pasta dough through a few times. This is half the dough that I made earlier, just to make it more manageable. And it will feel a little sticky at first, But what you do, or what I do, is just a touch of flour and then fold and get it back through a number of times, like maybe four or five times on each setting. And you will notice that the pasta gets a little firmer, a little less elastic and soft the more you do this. It's just the protein in the, the wheat basically being worked and strengthening. So that's gonna give a nice bite to the pasta. Oh, I love it, I do, this is so fun. <laughs> I'm so proud and so happy to be in this space as well. Oh, for the last, well, for the last eight years since starting my YouTube channel, I've bounced from kitchen to kitchen. They've never really felt like my own kitchen because they haven't been, it's whether I rented a studio or I, rented a, a house and you know I was just inheriting whatever kitchen that came with the house. Obviously I've been cooking in some lovely places and I feel really grateful but 
having this new space that is just how I want it, oh, it's the best feeling. So you're gonna see way more adventurous, way more content, beautiful stuff, food films coming your way and collaborations too. I can finally welcome people here. Look at the color on that pasta. That is really special. I didn't realize it would go that yellow or orange. So it is really emulating the egg color. So we'll get that through now. I don't want it too thin. After four or five rolls through the top setting, work your way down the grades. Look at that, that is a work of art. I just love working with pasta. Maybe I am Italian, who knows? So I'm making circular ravioli, so I got my rings, pastry cutters, and pastry brush, and a little water and oil to brush. So I have two different size rings. I got a small one and a big one. The smaller one is the bottom of the ravioli, and the big one is for the top, because we need enough pasta to cover over the mold and seal up perfectly. So I'm gonna cut my rings equal amounts of each size, and then we'll fill the smaller one with our lovely filling. So we're just putting a little bit of filling in each one. Well, not a little bit, actually. You want to try and get as much as you can cram in without it sort of exploding. And because I added that flour into this mix, it's actually going to firm up a little bit whilst it's cooking. Seed in the ravioli, just use a ring to cut off and neaten up the edges. And there we go, there's our first little ravioli. Just make sure that's all sealed. We don't want anything coming out when it's cooking. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, guys, it's almost time to cook. Well, it is time to cook. And this has been such a fun process making raviolis, very nostalgic. I think there's a romanticism to creating dishes like this. And it is a dish made with love. And there's only one person that I'd love to serve this to first. And that is someone very special. So we'll come to that in a bit, but to make this and to sort of, I want to coat these raviolis in something delicious. So I want to make a really, really simple sauce. Obviously we've got all that flavor locked with inside the ravioli, so it doesn't have to be much. I'm going to finally chop up a shallot, a clove of garlic, and just prepare some woodland mushrooms. I'm going to saute those together in a frying pan until lightly caramelized. And then I'll deglaze with a little white wine. And I'll also add a pinch of salt and pepper. And that is when I'll start cooking my raviolis in some salted boiling water. Oh, it's always a little bit nerve wracking getting ready to prepare the raviolis. It's only a short window of time before they've overcooked and you're worried that something's gonna go bad in the pan, they're gonna split. And I'm cooking for a very special guest, so there is, the tensions are high right now. I'm gonna get some nice caramelization on this, then I'll add a little salt and pepper and deglaze with some white wine. It's gonna 
this white wine in. At this stage, it's time to cook the pasta. So I get my water boiling in my saucepan and add a generous pinch of sea salt. I've also got a little olive oil in my water. I'm just preparing some chopped roasted hazelnuts because that's going to be my garnish. Let's get our ravioli in the water. Oh, panic over. Nothing splitting, nothing sticking, and no filling is coming out. So we're looking good. Literally a minute or so left. And what I'm going to do now is actually get some of this pasta water into my saucepan just so it emulsifies and I'll also add some wild garlic to wilt down too. All right, ravioli straight into this sauce. Let's just get rid of some of that water. This smells and looks incredible. Let's serve up. Just carefully get these out. Lovely little parcels. This is my kind of plate of food. This is almost like a woodland ravioli. We forage this beautiful wild garlic. The mushrooms are from the woodland. And finally, just to finish, a little crunch from some roasted hazelnut. And who better to taste this meal made with love than my love, AKA my mother. You excited, ma'am? Yeah. I'm very proud of this recipe. Please enjoy. Oh my goodness, that looks absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, wow. Kind of nervous. Mm. Nice. Mm. That is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. And the crunch as well on the top is everything just goes together really well. Thank you. I haven't had ravioli for so long. And what's the pasta texture like? Oh, spot on. That's what I was nervous about. Absolutely spot on. Yeah. I really want to eat some myself. Come on, then. I'll go and make my own plate. You enjoy that. No, Thanks, Mother. Oh, I am very proud of that. Labour of love, but one that I hope is going to be worth it. So let me give it a taste. Mm. Oh, that is a celebration of wild garlic for sure. And if any wild garlic dish is going to bring love, like the ancestors and in mythology, this one will. Wow, this is really good. Mmm. Oh, I'm enjoying this. Absolutely delicious. Mmm.